You scared me. What are you doing here? I'm just finishing my tea. The girls are sleeping. Oh, you want a YouTube video? Yeah, I've been meaning to do that. Let's rate all my charcuterie services from one to five. One being super easy, profitable, and a great one to add to your charcuterie business. Five being very hard, not enough money, not worth the time that goes into it. Let's start with charcuterie boards. This is basically an entry point for everybody when they're starting the, their business. They usually start with a charcuterie board. Um, what I like about charcuterie boards, I like that they're pretty easy. You don't need much to sell one. You just go get the ingredients. Uh, a pro and a con is that you have leftover grapes and leftover strawberries and crackers. You're not using all of those on the board. So it's a pro because you can eat it and it's a con because if you don't want to eat it, it's wasteful. But another pro for that is you can repurpose it, the leftover items for content for yourself to post. So bonus. A con is I don't love wrapping them in saran wrap. And if you're going to store it in your fridge overnight, you have to leave the crackers out. Otherwise they're going to get soggy. And sometimes the nuts do too. So then you have to separate the crackers um, unless you're doing an immediate drop off, making it then dropping it off or they pick up. But charcuterie boards are pretty easy. I'm going to give this a two. Number two, okay, grazing tables. Some pros and cons. First of all, grazing tables are my favorite thing. The number one pro is I make my own profit at least a thousand dollars per table, sometimes more, sometimes less. But I'm at a point now where I'm like, um, I'm not gonna do a grazing table for less than like 50 people so that it checks out that I'm, I'm pocketing almost a thousand dollars no matter what. But if you're not in that position to have a minimum, then you're still gonna make money because you're charging per person and then you have your little add-ons to the invoice and you've got the setup fee and the delivery and all of that. So grazing tables are amazing for money. That's my biggest, my biggest pro. Con would be, it takes some time to prep. Depending on the size of your grazing table, it can take you anywhere from five hours of prepping to 12 hours, especially if you're doing it alone. That is a con, um, but if you can hire someone to help you prep or get your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your mom, that's a pro. Free help is clutch. Great grazing tables, probably a four because if you're brand new to setting up a grazing table, it can be a little intimidating. Like you might not know how long is it going to take for me to style this table for a hundred people. I have all the product, but I don't feel like I'm going to set it up in time. I saw someone setting up a grazing table and they put the brie cheese first. And I was like, you can't put brie out first, like for a corporate client too. And I'm like, no, like this was a table that definitely took about, about two hours. And brie was the first thing she put out. And I was like, uh, uh, I'd say it's a four out of five for someone that's brand new and that's never done a grazing table. It could be challenging at first. Shameless plug. If you haven't taken Board of Business Blueprint, you should take it because that would make it probably a three out of five. Number three is mocktails. Mocktails are very visually pleasing and they're enjoyable to make. I like to make micro flower ice cubes to add into the mocktail for smaller events. Um, and then when you scale for larger events, that can be difficult. That is one of my cons is if you don't have a team to help you, especially if they're not hiring you just for mocktails, but they're hiring you for grazing tables too, um, you need a team, you need that support. I made a mistake and did mocktails for 400 people and two grazing tables for 400 people. I hired two people to help me and that still wasn't enough. Um, and it just, it was crazy. The, the things I had to bring and transport and all of that, um, but that was my first time doing it. So I learned so much from that experience. I know what I would do different now, but going into it, just like with my big water jug and pouring them in this like other pitcher, it was overwhelming and heavy and it was beautiful and they tasted great, but it just felt a little janky because I just didn't do it right. And I would probably offer my mobile mocktail service with like a little bar cart 
or you know a pop-up station and offer that for them too which is fun if you guys want to learn more you can actually make a lot of money doing mobile bar as an add-on and that's something all of the nectar is doing with mocktails but now you can basically be a bartender without needing a liquor license and then they pay for all the liquor so that's cool too i would give a three out of five they're not that hard you just have to generate a mocktail menu you have to make the things before you pitch it or before you give it to the client. I like to use organic, fresh, dye-free ingredients. Um, other people might want you to do some really fun kids party with mocktails and they want like, you know, fruit roll-ups in it and jelly beans and cotton candy and that could be something fun. You could niche down for that. So yeah, mocktails are super fun. I definitely think that is an add-on everyone should have. Something I want to add on mocktails as another service is mobile bartending. Um, if you can hire someone to do the bartending and you just charge the person a thousand dollars, I would say this is a one out of five. The easiest thing you can do is add mobile bartending to your grazing table when you're talking to them. So you could just upsell them. If they're talking to you for a grazing table or a charcuterie board for a party, you can say, hey, do you guys have a bartender? And then you could offer your services and say, you know, it's basically a thousand dollars. We bring on the plates, garnishes, napkins. We bring the bar. You just supply the ice and the liquor, and then we bring everything else, all the mocktail things. You can sell it how you want to sell it, but it's pretty easy. You just give them a flat rate of a thousand dollars or whatever number you feel comfortable with. That includes all those things I just listed. I'll learn more on that. We could talk about that later, but I would say that's probably the easiest thing out of all of this stuff is mobile bartending. Floral arrangements. Okay, pros is that you can make a lot of money off of these. Con is that it is labor intensive. So when you're making a floral installation or even a floral arrangement, there's a lot of work that goes into it. It's called processing. Processing is when you're removing like extra leaves and thorns and things that don't need to be on the flower. Another con that just came to me was you have to wake up super early to go to the flower mart and get all the good stuff. And then it takes some time. And another con is flowers die. So I have a lot of cons with floral arrangements. That's probably why I don't do them as much, but an installation piece, they go from $500 all the way to $3,000 because people will pay big money for these gorgeous things. I've done a few of them and I get really nervous because I want to do different things like floating installation and wall piece crawling up the wall. So the tough part with these is that every time you want to do something new, whether that's a floating piece or a wall piece, it's your first time you've never done it before so if you want to practice and do it at home you're going to have to go out of pocket and spend two to three hundred dollars on greenery and flowers maybe even more um and then it's just going to be there i guess you can do kind of like a styled shoot and shoot it but i do recommend making it and timing yourself of how long it's going to take you to do and how much that's spent you on flowers um because Otherwise, the other way for you to get that experience is to make something for an influencer. And then if it turns out really bad or it took you way too long, it was just an influencer and it's not so serious. But I would hate for you guys to get a paid client and then you like, you're like, this is the first time I've ever made a floating piece and then it falls down. So I would give this one a five out of five, very difficult, but very profitable. I would rate cones probably a three out of five because usually you're gonna have an MOQ, which stands for minimum order quantity. I wouldn't do it for less than 50 cones. So you could get an order for 100 to 200 cones and that is a lot of work. What I would recommend is pre-making 50 to 80 of them and then at the event, make them as you go or store them in an extra room. If you wanna learn anything about starting a charcuterie business or any of these add-ons I talked about, let me know in the comments below and visit thegrazeacademy.com and you can sign up for Board to Business Blueprint where I teach you step-by-step -step on how you can start your charcuterie business today.